Uh, hello, back in mid-2018, I did this video, Light and Shadow, Giza and the Equinox, and I was looking at uh, uh, archaeoastronomy, equinox, solstice um, alignments, but in there I uh, brought up a point which I think is, um, given some uh, just a recent article I found, I think is worth resharing and looking back into, because one of the points in that video I was very curious, um, asking the question, was this photo doctored it's a very famous photo uh showing that the great pyramid has has eight sides and that this shadow splits the southern face on the equinox which would be quite a feat but um again asking a question was this photo doctored uh so depending on who you know i first heard it through like Robert Duvall, Graham Hancock, and back in those days when you know, pre, when I sort of really started looking um, into these things. But uh, Robert Duvall here, I'll put the link uh, addressing the Theosophical Society talking about this and showing that photo in the background. Uh, another link here. So who actually found this photo in the museum and who f first brought it to light is also a little bit confusing exactly when the photo was taken because... Um, some sources will say it's uh, 1940 by British Air Force pilot P. Groves. Uh, others will say it's 1926. But what I uh, think is interesting, because I found, to come across this article, I was looking into Alfred Lucas, and a few interesting points here. Um, he's referred to as Egypt's Sherlock Holmes, a uh, very important figure, not just in regards to Egyptology preservation of artefacts, because he was a, a chemist, but... He also pushed uh, forensic science, criminal forensics, as well as the application of very strict, more forensic uh, ways of thinking in regards to archaeology. Uh, photographing Tutankhamun, I'll put the, the, uh, the link in the description because one of the things they're also talking about here is in various photo archivists and so forth are, talking about the issues in regards to the way photography was handled um, back in that time in a forensic sense and uh, mentions now for instance uh, Alfred Lucas in 1931 uh, talks about that uh, as you see the headline Egypt Sherlock Holmes forensic chemistry Mr uh, Alfred Lucas's book faked photos and negatives that lie and so he's talking about not just the the way that photos were catalogued and, and, and handled, but also that there was uh, a lot of doctoring. Now, before deep fake, people were doctoring photos. You can see that uh, one of the more well-known examples is um, Stalin and the purges and the way people were disappeared from photography, the very 1984-esque. But uh, Alfred Lucas, uh, chemist he was part of a team Howard Carter's team excavation of King Tut's tomb uh, analyzing the finds preserving the finds and again a, a leader in uh, forensic sciences as well now why this is also relevant is because anyone who's probably heard about it but, uh, King Tut's tomb was a huge media event the whole curse of King Tut's tomb and, and the the business and the entertainment factor in regards to archaeology and the money that came from there. Again, I'd highly recommend reading that whole article. Um, uh, of course, be linked in the description. I really first come across Alfred Lucas looking into uh, you know ancient aliens, lost high technology, you can't drill, and so forth. Uh, Lucas and Petri had an on-running discussion about how these things um, were done. Turns out that. Petri was quite wrong in, in this regard. Great as he was in many other topics, this was not his uh, area. And well, Lucas was quite correct about free abrasive drilling, but ancient Egyptian materials and industries, like he knew, knew his stuff. He was an Egyptologist as well as a, you know, a, a chemist or a, you know, a, in, in the hard sciences that way as well. So if you want to look further into there, but uh, there's also biographies come out um, Egypt's Sherlock Holmes. Uh, he found the way to make the faience glass, the, the, the mixtures um, that they were using to do that in well. So that as well, very, again, important figure, but the way he looks and um, talks about not just, because the article talks how 
uh, including well, he mentioned they mentioned Petri and their and and others as well the the business, but they're sort of critical on the way that Petri um, insisted that his photography collections be handled and and presented, and that photos which in a strict forensic sense should not even sort of really be in the collection that they're they're more you know um touristy let's let's say as well but uh again just that's an interesting read but back to the the fakery of the photos because uh especially at that time uh, world war one is another classic example a lot of the world war one photos you see are re photographs so they did multiple exposures to make the battle you know, you have a plane in the corner, artillery piece, an infantryman running off. So again, we think more, you know, photoshopping deep fake is more of a, a recent event, but it has been going on for a while and has been something of, of a business entertainment as well as uh, political aspects. But brings back to the point of this photo, um, just as well as you can brush people out of um, photography, you can add things in. Uh, Fraud in artifacts is all still a worldwide event. There's um, in lots of places. There's a a lot of fake artifacts um, going around, and quite again, quite the business to go in there again. Um, uh, you know, in terms of his, the business of of history and archaeology and turning it into entertainment, um, the <laughs> the alien. Um, bodies you know found in there and presented by again sort of people within that sphere uh who make fight but uh i again rec i'd recommend in regards to these peruvian humanoid mummies and other things again hidden inca tours being a, a big promoter gaia tv making for fortune off selling this stuff uh the scientists against myth just recently released two videos about that where they analyze these you know evident frauds but it's um also quite well it, they're human remains it's quite you know it's a it's an abuse of history but it's also an abuse of of body parts as well uh very well this very shameful behavior uh there's no no nice way to get around that i don't care how much lovely footage you take you know like this is just shameful behavior and absolutely disgusting mr foster but um the point being with this photo so we see the, the shadow splitting the Great Pyramid there on the equinox. You can see it on top left-hand side. Now, these types of alignments and features are not rare. They're you know, a very, very common feature you know, all across the world where you'll find you know, stone circles, tombs, so forth, being aligned to the solstice um, or, or, to, or to the equinox. Pyramid of Kulkulkan is a very famous case. On the equinox, the snake head at the bottom, see how it's on, along those steps, there's a, a play of light and shadow, and only on the equinox does this appear, and it's a, it is a big event. Uh, you need to get, get in a lottery to get ticket, because so many people want to be there on this particular day, that you, know, you can't just sort of you know, rock up and hope to get in. It's one of those special days. Uh, another classic example would be you know, Stonehenge on the equinox and solstice, you know, all, all the... You know, people people are out there. You know, doing their you know their thing, making that event. It's no again. It's it's absolutely packed out on these particular days. Yet when I look for you know, so it's it's a huge event. Whether it's Kukulkan and, and all these other ancient sites, Stonehenge and these stone circles. How many you know of the, the New Ages come out there and and do their thing. But uh, when you look up um, Equinox, Great Pyramid, Shadow. 2018 or you could do this 20 you could do any year apart from when this photo was taken and it just seems to be next to nothing now i had a conversation with someone and they told me they did see one video uh, but they lost a screenshot where the person was at the pyramid on that day but the, the shadow effect was very much less than what it appears to be in the photo now if stonehenge is still aligned if cool is still aligned if all these other places are still aligned you know, the, uh, Egypt hasn't shift for, from shifted because of some you know cataclysmic event since the 1920s or the 1940s. Whenever that uh, original black and white photo is taken, there is no reason why that shadow shouldn't still appear as evident 
as it does um, still now. And, you know, you would have thought Moonbeam and, you know, the Chakra crew would be charging their crystals and, you know, harnessing the pyramid power on that particular day. This is the most you know, celebrated of, of these, you know, ancient sites on the equinox and solstice, but they just really seemed, you know, there's a lot of pyramid power plants and, and stuff going on there. Um, you know, I would have thought Equinox Great Pyramid Shadow, you know, and there'd, there'd be hundreds of, of videos and photos, but it, it, it seems to be nothing. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it, I, you know, is this, this would be the money festival of the year to, you know, align your chakras and charge your crystals and, you know, and distribute them and sell them and, you know, have the, the whole sort of, you know, uh, the business going on. Uh, especially in some recent years when there's been some other astronomical events at that time, you know, really, you know, the dreadlocks, you know, would be really, you know, having the party of, of the millennium um, been going on there, but this just seems to be nothing. So I, uh, again, I propose that this is probably faked, um, having looked into and found um, Alfred Lucas and, and these photo archivists talking about the way that... Uh, um, not only were photos re-photographed, re but um, and well, and the other issues that it goes into regards to this sort of less forensic approach um, to excavation, such as King Tut's tomb and the and the money and the business and and just the sort of the, the public hysteria that can go into these things. I would just you know I'm sort of I would double down and be well. I think this um, there's no good reason why that shadow couldn't appear. Um, especially at the time, there's, there, there were great reasons f for, to uh, tinker with the negative. Very and, and as far as photoshopping goes in this, you know, old-fashioned way, that's a very simple job to do. So, yeah, just thought that would be. I think the article is more interesting, if, especially if you're looking into the um, other aspects and how uh, Alfred Lucas coming along and more forensic approaches and. Uh, that, that goes as well, especially in, in you know, the time of King Tut and, and even sort of prior to that, there was a really big business, um, you know, uh, selling fake artefacts, still an issue now, uh, selling mummies and, and mummia and uh, just using it as snuff and, and all these other things as well. So I think that the links would be um, more interesting. And again, it's, you know, uh, things really haven't changed from the past and, and the King Tut um, uh, the way it grabbed public attention to the way uh, it still goes now and, and the business and, and there's no shortage of people who uh, whether has a bit of a, a bit of a lark has a bit of fun or whether to you know, line their pockets are more than willing to do uh, this type of thing and I think the more telling thing is that you know, yeah, but you know, um, no one's aligning their chakras there on the equinox uh, of the Great Pyramid. I think that that would be the uh, the solstice would be you know probably the prime day in regard. You know, uh, if you're interested in the uh, ancient Egyptian history, that being the New Year, that would be the imp most important day of the year essentially. But at least on the equinox and and getting the pyramid charged and you know your, all all that stuff that goes with you know. Um, this type of new age thing it's just very very strange to me and and i had my doubts going back to 2018 and uh just thought yeah were you worth sharing i think it's uh very questionable I, to say for sure i don't know but uh I, you know if, if earlier i said I, I i wouldn't bet on it that this was you know i wouldn't bet the house on it i'd make a small wager but the wager i'd put on this now being uh, a faked photo um, would increase significantly. So anyway, with that, hope you enjoyed and have a good one.